returning champion, a graduate student from Birmingham, Michigan, Drew Basile, whose two-day cash winnings total $33,282. Welcome back to Jeopardy! Emma Betcher, Jonathan Fisher, Erica Hosick, Danielle Maurer, Lloyd C., and now Drew Basile. These are the names of the Jeopardy! giant killers who have gone on to win more games after their initial upset of a super champion. Can Drew keep his win streak alive into the weekend? Or will we be ending the week with a new champion in Rochelle or Josh? Good luck. Fictional characters for six. In the Twilight Saga, vampire-human hybrid Renesme Cullen was a baby when this character fell for her. Drew? Who's Edward? No. Almost as gross, it's Jacob. Oh. Back to you, Drew. <laughs> Gotta read up. Uh, multiple meanings, 800. Happening now, or the movement of the tide. Drew. What is current? Yes. Multiple meanings for a thousand. To abstain or elect not to do something. Like, not mentioning it's another word for a song's chorus. Drew. I don't have it. A 12 second achievement by this pair from Dayton, Ohio, got them on more than half a dozen stamps. Drew. Were the Wright brothers? The Wright brothers is correct. And with that, we are flying into our first commercial break. We'll come right back when Jeopardy returns in just a moment. Drew Basile is our champ, a graduate student from Michigan. In college, Drew, you received a pretty cool sounding grant. What did you do? Yeah, so not that long ago in college, um, I got a grant to go write in Italy. And the goal was to produce a travel log. And, you know, I was very excited about this. I traveled all through Italy and I had so much fun that I didn't write a word. Um, so <laughs> I showed up at, at, at school to give a presentation and I had to, you know, crank out thousands upon thousands of, of absolute drivel. And, uh, you know, they didn't ask for a refund. So <laughs> you totally skimmed them. You just took a free trip to Italy. <laughs> It's about, it's an investment. And so, we'll, you, you know, it's a long-term investment. A cultural enrichment for you, the student. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Uh, smile, 800. She posted an Instagram tip. Open your mouth when you smile, like you're having the time of your life. Drew. Blake Lively? Who is Blake Lively? It is Blake Lively, with that famous smile. Phoenix, 200. To impede, or a laundry receptacle. Drew. What is hamper? You got it. Uh, human body, 2000. Astigmatism occurs when the curvature of this dome-shaped transparent membrane becomes irregular. Drew. What is the cornea? Good for 2000. Um, did you get my letter for 16? No hard feelings? In 1968, months after she shot this man, Valerie Solanus wrote to him, I'm very happy you're alive and well. Drew. Who is Warhol? Yes. Uh, letter for two. In a letter to Anais Nin, it is true I swim in a perpetual sea of sex, but the actual excursions are fairly limited. Drew. Who is Miller? Henry Miller being brutally honest, yes. Um, abdications for 800. This Russian czar renounced the throne March 15, 1917, and was killed with his family a year later. Drew? Was Nicholas II? Yes. Back to you, Drew. Uh, John Richard II. The answer there, the final daily double in the game. Um, let's go 4,000. All right, 4,000 at stake in genres. The novel The Difference Engine is part of this alternate history genre that merges Victorian era style with futuristic tech. Uh, what is steampunk? Yes, you look very happy about steampunk. You now have 15,600. Double E, 1600. This word for a wild close quarter brawl can also mean a confused jumble of people in a crowd. Drew. What is a melee? Right. Uh, ends in E, 12. Parody is a family of smallish birds, such as the titmouse and this one. Drew. What is a chickadee? That's right. And some double E 400, please. It's an embankment raised alongside a river, perhaps the Mississippi, to prevent it from overflowing. Drew. What is a levee? Right. A uh, human body for four? A surgery to crush the phrenic nerve that's stimulating the diaphragm will relieve a severe case of this seven letter nuisance. Drew. What are the hiccups? Yes. Uh, and lovely mile 400. The Noya Gallery and the Cooper Hewitt are two of the institutions that give a stretch of Fifth Avenue this alliterative name. Drew. What is the Museum Mile? Museum Mile is correct, taking you to an even $20,000. Very interesting as we head into Final Jeopardy. Here's the category that will decide this Friday game. Sports. We'll find out if they're sports fans when we come back. Final Jeopardy today concerns sports. Here's the clue. 50 years ago, Vin Scully announced he got a standing ovation in the Deep South for breaking a longtime record. 
30 seconds. Good luck. Michelle Brown in the middle had a thousand bucks. Her response was, didn't get one, I'm afraid. She wagered $5 and drops to 995. Josh Hyde was in second place with $10,000. He wrote down, who is Hank Aaron? That is correct. Hammering Hank beating Babe Ruth's career home run record. What did you wager, Josh? Yeah, I thought you might. $10,000, <laughs> you now have 20,000 and you're tied with Drew for the lead. Drew Basile, did you come up with Hank Aaron? You wrote it at the last minute, there it is. And you wagered nothing oh. at all. You wagered for the tie and we have a tie. This game is going to a final tiebreaker clue. Here's how this will work. I will reveal a category and then a clue. Drew, Josh, the first of you to ring in with a correct response will be declared our winner. Your tiebreaker category today is science. And here's the clue. This phenomenon, named for a 19th century man, is apparent in moving light sources as well as moving sound sources. Drew. What is Doppler? What is Doppler effect? The Doppler effect is oh. correct, yes. <laughs> Drew Vecino, you are a three-game champion by the skin of your teeth. Your total winnings, $53,282. And our returning champion, a graduate student from Birmingham, Michigan, Drew Vecino, whose three-day Cash winnings total $53,282. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Ken Jennings. Thanks, Johnny Gilbert, and welcome to a new week of Jeopardy. On Friday's show, the game ended in a thrilling tiebreaker in which the quick buzzing skills of our current champion, Drew Basile, allowed him to prevail again and head into the weekend as a three-game winner. Today we welcome Aaron and Graham to the Alex Trebek stage. Good luck to all three of you. I'm feeling positive for a thousand. Norman Vincent Peale's The Power of This came out in 1952, but this is still recommended as a stress buster. Drew. What is positive thinking? Correct. Um, ease for 600. According to, and a person who's another's equal. Drew. What is per and peer? Correct. Ease for 800. I'll be very disappointed if you don't get these. Understanding or knowledge and sharp like an animal senses. Drew. What is can and keen? Correct. Back to you, Aaron. Let him cook for 800. David Chang added seven up to give this Korean staple some bubbliness in its cabbage. Drew. What is kimchi? Yes. Let him cook for 600. Bam. Enjoy kicked up fried calamari with Creole olive salad at his flagship New Orleans restaurant. Graham. Who's Emerald? Bam, you get $600 more dollars, and we're going to a commercial. We'll come right back with more Jeopardy in just a moment. Drew Basile is our attorney champion, a grad student from Birmingham, Michigan. And I understand, speaking of difficult questions, you caused many questions once in a sushi restaurant. Yeah, well, uh, Ken, as you can probably tell, uh, I'm quite tall. You know, I'm 6'6", six, six, so that was a little unheard of last summer when I went to Japan with some friends of mine. And I can remember there was one particular night, you know, it was late, we were going into this sushi bar, and it was this low entrance, so I really had to stoop. And then when I came to my full height, the full restaurant, there were gasps. And people were so in awe that they began to get up and compare their shoes to me. Uh, and they bought me free things. And then the rest of the trip, I walked on my tippy toes. <laughs> it's like a Godzilla movie yeah, for, for everybody who saw you. All right, Drew, uh, you have the lead right now, but it's Graham who has command of the board. Let's get back into the game, Graham. Where to? Stu, let him cook for 400, please. You bleeping bleeps better know this TV chef has a personal recipe for soft scrambled eggs and bacon jam toast on his website. Well, Drew. Who was Gordon Ramsay? Right. Uh, directors for 1,000, please. He has created the director's cut for Watchmen, as well as Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Drew. Who is Zack Snyder? He loves his own cut, yes. Ease for 200. Short form of a job that keeps order on the court, and a chain of rocks near the water's surface. Drew. What is Ref and Reef? Yes. Back to you, Drew. Poetry for 800. So vast was the struggle to found the Roman state is a line from this epic by Virgil. True. What is the Aeneid? Correct. Poetry test for a thousand. 
There's a stake in your fat black heart, she wrote in Daddy, a searing poem from her posthumous 1965 collection, Ariel. True. It was Plath. Good for a thousand. Prehistoric animals for a thousand? Sea scorpions called Eurypterids could reach eight feet, making them the biggest ever members of this phylum that includes crustaceans and bugs. True. What are arthropods? That's right. I'm feeling positive for 200. A basic subatomic particle, it's positively charged, and the chief constituent of primary cosmic rays. True. What are protons? Yes. Positive for 400? In 2016, the 1,000 Fathers March along Beale Street celebrated positive male role models in this city. True. What is Memphis? Yes. Positive for 600? The sum of these two positive integers is a two-digit number, but when the two are multiplied, the product is a single digit. True. What is one and nine? Very good, yes. And here's your final clue. When jump-starting a car, use the red cable to connect between each battery's positive one of these final posts. Aaron. What is a node? Sorry, no. Drew. What are terminals? Positive terminal, that's correct. You're on quite a run right now, Drew. You have the lead as we head into double jeopardy. Aaron, you'll select first when we come back. Let's go with 14 letter responses for 1200. In 597 BC, this king the second deported King Jehoiakim to Babylon. Drew. Who is Nebuchadnezzar? Right. 14 letter for 1600. In philosophy, it prioritizes free will. As a political philosophy, it prioritizes individual freedom. Drew. What is libertarianism? That's right. Uh, live music for 1200, please. The first concert this Maroon 5 frontman saw was Warrant at the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium as a preteen. Drew. Was Adam Levine? Yes. Around Italy for 1600? It's the Italian name for the city of Dante and Machiavelli. Drew. What is Firenze? Florence, right. Nothing like live music for 1600? Answer there is a daily double for you, Drew. What are you thinking? Not much. Uh, 2000? All right, here's your clue in nothing like live music. The tour name had to be Ninja when these two bands from the first Lollapalooza joined forces again in 2009. Um, who are Nine Inch Nails and... Jane's Addiction. Oh, right before the buzzer. That is the acronym. Yes, Nine Inch Nails and Jane's Addiction. Well done. You add 2,000. Old cars for 1,600. Answer there. The other daily double, Drew. What will you bet this time, Drew? 200. Just $200. Here's your clue in old cars. Studebaker, maker of an electric car around 1900, was based in this town. Newt Rockney worked part-time in sales. Notre Dame. No, I'm sorry. Don't forget your phrasing, but also <laughs> Notre Dame is not the town. South Bend, Indiana right. would be the right town. Well, but you only lost 200. Select again. Old cars for 400? Henry Ford was famous for saying customers could have this 1908 to 1927 car in any color, as long as it was black. Drew? What is the Model T? Yes. Aaron, you're still in the red at the end of double. You were trying to get out and taking risks, and I admire that, but you were going up against someone who had 33 correct responses today. That's our strongest game of the season from your opponent, Drew. So you won't be here for final, but Drew and Graham, you two will be facing this category. Names in the heavens. The category for this Monday final Jeopardy, names in the heavens. Here's the clue. When this body was discovered in 1978, Persephone was suggested as its name. 30 seconds, good luck. Graham Hicks first in second place with 11,000 even. His response? What are Sam, Jacob, and Callista? Wouldn't it be weird if that were correct? My, Unfortunately, it's not. It's your my kids. Nephews and my nephews and my niece. All right, nephews and niece. That's great. You wagered all but a buck, dropping you down to $1. Drew Basile had a big lead today, $26,400. He wrote down what is series, 
That's the Roman equivalent of Persephone's mom, but I'm afraid that's not correct. She was the wife of the god of the dead, uh, Hades or Pluto. This is actually Pluto's moon, Charon, discovered in 1978. How much did you wager, Drew? $4,000, dropping you down to $22,400 today. Still a pretty good haul, especially considering your four-day total, $75,682. Congratulations.